what a way to start the month what a way to start the month well get your coffee or your tea ready because in today's video we're going to be talking about quite a lot of things i've got a lot to cover uh, mostly about a few projects or so not too many but it's just a lot of information to cover so please hang with me because i'm going to try and take it easy and not try to jump too quick from one to the other whereas just try and focus as much as possible on each one to give you as much information as possible because we got a lot of updates and i'm super hyped about this and i can't wait to share it with you of course and uh, hence why i'm doing this as a premiere so i can also be in the live chat this is again if you have any questions fire them away in the live chat it's not a live stream which means that if you're asking me something in the live chat it doesn't mean that i'm going to answer in this video but i will be in the live chat while this video is playing so i'll be able to answer your questions then but let's kick it off with chainx we're also going to be talking about darwinia i'm actually going to answer one question that somebody had in a, one of the comments in one of the videos to try and clarify what's going on with the staking for darwinia and uh, something that they weren't aware of obviously because uh, maybe i didn't explain it properly in the last video that i did so i'm going to be talking about that then i'll also talk about an announcement from dan reeser the vice president of akala and karura he's made a very very important announcement and as i promised you as soon as we get information i will cover it on this channel and i will cover it of course and then we've got something from Hobie as well, something that's interesting. It's hinting at something and we're going to be talking about what it's hinting at. And uh, yeah, and then I finally I close it off with some information on Edgeware because somebody in the comments has asked me to do a video on Edgeware. I haven't covered Edgeware in quite some time, so thank you for reminding me about that. And uh, I will be talking about Edgeware. They don't have too many updates, but I will cover what we have. So to kick it off here with Chinex, as always, Chainx is doing pretty well. We're going to take a look at the price quickly and then we're going to talk about the latest updates, of course. So let's take a look at the price. As you can see, on average, it's trading at $15.69, but I'm going to use MXC Exchange. I know it's listed on Qcoin, but it's just that MXC has a historical chart for PCX, so it's easier for me to use MXC. Again, if you haven't signed up for MXC already, you can find a ref link in the description of this video in the exchange deal section if you're interested i would very much appreciate it thank you but we did really really well so ever since we went to qcoin we touched 18 dollars twice and again this was twice on qcoin on mxc we only touched it once and then we went down again but we're on the uptrend so as you can see on the four hour chart we're still in the uptrend we're doing very well we had a few dips here which are great for accumulation especially this one here at 13 30 what's this 1330 something no 1299 sorry 1299 so yeah a, a really really good dip here for accumulation especially if you're trading if you're not trading and you just want to scoop up you're thinking well i missed the boat here with the qcoin listing and this was the moment you pretty much make the entry as you can see here and now we're back up again so we're likely going to see a new all-time high again we have an all-time high on qcoin at 97 dollars but it doesn't really count i think the realistic all-time high is 18 dollars uh, just because the 97 dollar one was for a split second and it was mostly the bots so yeah i am very hyped about uh, the price of pcx i'm fairly confident it's going to do well especially because with the power chain auctions around the corner and again don't forget the airdrop for holding pcx and uh, somebody asked me before when i've mentioned it do they need to hold them on the exchange well i don't recommend it but if you hold them on mxc exchange yes they do support the ksx airdrop which means they're also gonna list ksx uh, once sherpa x bonds as a parachain to kusama when the kusama parachain auctions start so that's great so yes you can hold them on uh, mxc exchange just make sure they're not in an actual order because if you have them in a sell order waiting to sell then it's not really counted as an available balance so i don't know if you're going to qualify for the airdrop it has to be in your available balance which means not have any orders active at the time of when they're going to take that snapshot and i think they're going to take that snapshot just before the genesis block gets created on uh, sherpa x for the first ksx that gets minted so yeah uh, we don't know like the full details of that this is just speculation because they said that they're going to do a snapshot i don't know when the snapshot is going to be announced they'll tell us and when they tell us i'll be sure to cover it uh so yeah pcx is doing very well we're likely going to see more exchange listings hopefully okx very soon i'm i'm thinking and this is speculation i'm thinking that okx are waiting 
for the Kusama parachain auctions to start before the list PCX, but maybe they're gonna do it sooner. Maybe they're gonna do it sooner because we got a date. Uh, we got a date for when these parachain auctions are gonna start and that's what I wanna talk about in this video. And that's why I think this video is very important to kick it off on a Monday. And uh, let's take a look at Katon here. Again, one of my uh, second favorite projects after Chainx. Uh, Katon is from Darwinia Network and it's just so undervalued. I've been saying this time and time again. Even Blockchain Brad agrees with me. I know that I've commented on a, on a tweet from um, Girl Gone Crypto. And I've said that she should basically ask in the tweet, uh, which does she, which project are you hyped about? So of course I said Katon because it's such an undervalued token in the sense of the market cap. It's only at like 11 million market cap at the moment. And uh, people don't see the value. I'm just really, really surprised that a Polkadot Eco project can have such a low market cap. I know that Rink has like over 100 million, I think 130 million last I checked, but Katon is at 11 million market cap and people don't understand why it's so important. Well, aside from the staking rewards that you get, which are humongous because you get a lot of staking power for staking Katon, it's also gonna have a use case for developers building dApps or deploying dApps on Darwinia. So when they are gonna deploy something on Darwinia, they need Katon in order to deploy those dApps. So you could see here where the value of Katon is. And again, on MXC, there isn't much liquidity, but on Uniswap, the bots are gonna play with you. So actually, if we look at MXC here, we can see there is a buy order, which is a bigger one here at $240. But all other than that, like they're quite small orders. And then for the sell orders, we've got one here at 295 almost, one at 295, one at 294.99. So 144 Katon up to $295 here. It is quite thin. There's this one here at 265, only five, but most of them are under, under one, right? So it is quite thin, but at least the bots aren't playing with you because I have seen people trying to buy up to $300 on, on Uniswap and ending up being paying more because the bots are checking, basically monitoring the memory pool on the Ethereum blockchain of your transaction and before the transaction goes into the block and then they place a larger buy order or even a small buy order but for with a bigger gas uh, gas fee so because they're paying more gas fee then they're obviously going to have priority in the in the block when when it gets verified by the miner so because of that your transaction is going to fail their transaction is going to be successful i've actually seen a bot pay over three thousand dollars in order to buy katon when somebody else tried to buy Katon, just so that that person's transaction can fail. Imagine that, like that's ruthless, right? The bots don't care. The bots are calculating because their mechanisms, right? They're automated. They're calculating what is the profitability of me paying this $3,000 transaction fee in order for me to make a profit. And, and the bots are calculating all that and then they end up making a profit. Basically how it works is the bot buys, the transaction fails for the person that tried to buy, then the person will try to buy again and then the bot will sell as soon as that person makes the buy so that is pretty harsh because uh, when the bot sells then of course the person's kind of at a loss if you think about it of course if the person doesn't care and is holding for the long term then so be it right but if not then yeah it, it does hurt that person who tried to buy because they maybe bought like, like say they wanted to buy 280 and they end up paying 300 or more then the bot sells and the price is back down to 260 or 250 right so yeah it has been pretty pretty sideways here for quite some time we had this spike to 319 but i wouldn't be surprised if we see Katon at over 400 in the near future, especially with what's to come with the Kusama Parchain auctions this month, which we're gonna talk about in this video, of course. I'm super hyped about that. Uh, but uh, I do wanna talk about one other thing regarding uh, PCX before, or Chainx, before we move on to the Darwinia uh, staking wallet, because I wanna talk about the staking feature. So the next thing I want to talk about here is with regards to the parachain auction on Rokoku. So Chainx have finally made it. Chainx have bonded as a parachain. As you can see here, they are now a parachain. Uh, they have actually made quite a few changes here to, to this list because they're testing it, right? That's what Rokoku is. Rokoku is for testing. So I'm super hyped about Chainx finally getting that parachain slot and finally bounding. They were not the first. Akala were the first. I know that Darwinia also made it, but then something happened and they got downgraded. So yeah, uh, but it's not a big deal. Again, this is just testnet, right? Anybody can constantly claim those rock tokens 
from the faucet and uh, once you do that you you get 20 rock tokens each day each 24 hours and then you can bid for um, the para chain that you want to see bond right uh, for the para thread i should say who you want to see bond as a para chain because they're not going to bond as a para chain until they win the voting of course the crowd sale so uh, yeah, before we move on and to talk about Darwinia staking feature, uh, we're going to be also talking about uh, some news on the parachains, like I was saying at the beginning of the video. But first, I'd like to thank today's channel sponsor, Kefi. So let's watch this short clip from Kefi, which is a very interesting project. I have done a dedicated review of them before. And uh, after that, we'll continue on here with the rest of the video to talk about the parachain. So please hang with me here and let's watch this. Thank you. This video is sponsored by KeyFi. KeyFi is an all-in-one platform for tracking, swap and staking your tokens and more. Think of KeyFi as a DeFi aggregator where you can do most things DeFi which stands for Decentralized Finance. Think of the ability to supply liquidity to various pools of your choice, ones which pay better than others as well as swapping tokens in and out using platforms like Uniswap or OneInch and choosing which platform to use for such swaps. So it gives you flexibility, basically bringing all DEXs together in one place. They've started off on Ethereum and are now also on Binance Smart Chain, which means if you are interested, the token with the ticker symbol KeyFi is tradable on Uniswap as an ERC20 token on Ethereum and on PancakeSwap for the Binance Smart Chain. The team consists of the co-founder and tech lead Ben Gervais, who's got 13 plus years experience in web development and startups, as well as 3 plus years experience at SelfKey as head of R&D, working on decentralized identity technologies. The total supply of the token is 10 million, with a large batch being locked up. One special update that's coming to KeyFi with more details to be announced soon is something called Key Tokens. The name has yet to be decided, but a Key Token is a fungible interest bearing token that also earns you KeyFi just for holding it. Key Tokens will help a user allocate their funds into a basket of DeFi tokens that are selected by an AI model. For more details on KeyFi, please check the video popping up on the top right hand corner of the screen. Thank you for watching the clip. Now to continue on here, the next point I want to talk about is with regards to Polka Wallet, which is Polkadot's mobile wallet. Again, it's not an official Polkadot wallet, but it is a community-based wallet which has been around since the beginning, since Polkadot was pretty much launched. I've done a dedicated tutorial on Polka Wallet, so do check that out. A few things have changed since then. There have been a number of updates, but as you can see here, Chainx has finally been added to the list together with Polkadot, Kusama, Akala, Laminar. These were the ones that were already there, and now I've got Chainx there, so Chainx is gonna be in the spotlight. And of course, you can imagine Darwinia is also gonna get added there at some point in future updates, probably Edgeware probably Kulupu, probably other projects within the Polkadot eco, right, Plasm and so on. Uh, but I'm super hyped to see Chainx finally here, right? I'm super hyped because this puts them in the spotlight. It's as simple as that. So that's great. Now to continue on here and talk about Darwinia's uh, staking feature. So again, I have actually got some test um, ring tokens here that I've actually used for staking in order to understand how staking actually works. I've got a specific wallet which I use just for testing purposes. So here you could see that once you actually set up staking, it looks pretty overwhelming, right? Especially for a non-techie. If you're non-techie, it's overwhelming. But essentially what you're doing is once you go to apps.darwinia.network, which is the official uh, DAP website, uh, then you go to staking and then you'll see the the wallet so this is pretty much once you decide to stake because you you have the option to stake ring or katon if you already have katon right so assuming you had ring you are staking ring and you lock them up uh, for a certain period of time staking and locking at the same time i've actually locked them up i think i've locked them up for two years and uh, as you can see here they show up as locked okay i've got 1300 which are locked uh, this is what I've got bonded here, 1.11. 1, 1 and the reason I've got these as bonded is because I did not actually nominate. Uh, no, it's not that I didn't nominate. What I didn't do is I didn't um, I didn't set a payee account. So I need to actually set an account where I want to be paid to. So when you set that account to be paid to, then instead of uh, compounding your ring 
uh, to a validator then you're actually getting paid directly which means it'll go into your available balance and that means that it's transferable again i cannot transfer it here yet to any exchange for example because there is no exchange at the moment that supports the substrate version of ring or the substrate version of Keton. so i want to make this very clear only the erc20 version is supported on the ethereum blockchain which means that you need to actually go and convert them uh, through the bridge that Darwinia has through the wormhole bridge you need to use that in order to convert them to an ERC20 and it's not worth doing so for such a small amount so I'm just pretty much accumulating here I'm actually thinking to compound this because I've only done this pretty much as a test it's not like my real bug it's just a test bug and I've got the uh, Keton which were generated when I was locking up that ring for I think two years I got 0 0.286 Keton which I've bonded uh, to a validator so this is the part that i wanted to talk about because somebody in a comment uh, somebody wrote to me in a comment in a video uh, that uh, they were not able to get any payouts from the validator and they were wondering why so they basically what they did is they staked but they didn't get any payments so the reason being is because they didn't nominate anybody as you can see i've already nominated someone which is a validator a validator node uh, which is basically generating the blocks and validating them too and uh, yeah, you have to you have to um, nominate someone. So you go to the to the cogwheel here, and then you have to choose a nominee. So you go to set nominees here, and once you go to set nominees, you have an option here. So I've actually set Rainbow, which was like the top one, uh, as the validator here. This was as a test again. Like I don't know this person. I'm just basically using it as a test. You can choose any of them from this list. So you basically select somebody here. And as you can see, they pop up on the top right hand, on the right hand side. Uh, so you just click on nominate, you sign the transaction and that's it, right? And uh, once you do that, then um, just make sure that you change your reward destination. Okay, I have changed my reward destination to one, uh, to one of my wallets basically to get paid there. So just click on change reward destination, select your wallet where you wish to be paid. And then you're going to get uh, on a daily basis, you're going to get uh, the ring tokens in your available balance pretty much right this is how it's going to work so this is what you need to do uh, just to make this clear and hopefully it is clear now for you especially if you are stuck and you didn't understand how again with regards to the earnings i've set them to two days but you can choose six days or whatever so yeah just set them to two days if you're interested and then you can see your reward history again the actual validator is the one that is claiming uh, the ring for you on your behalf and then you get paid right everyone who's staking on this nomin on this validator gets paid uh, on a daily basis right even though you're selecting two days so yeah this is pretty much how it works and hopefully it's more clear now but now let's talk about the next big piece of news and i'm sure you're very hyped you're eager as eager as i was to finally see this happen well posted today the 5th of april at 7 p.m my time if there was ever a network to launch a major event like crowd loans at 420 on april 20th it's kusama only time will tell so on the 20th of april we're gonna see the kusama parachain auctions so that is great that is very very good to see and i think that in the coming days because if you remember dan reeser if you watched that interview that i did with him on this channel and it should pop up on the top right hand corner of the screen if you haven't already watched it please do He's the vice president of Akala in Karura and he's actually said that he'd like to see at least seven days notice uh, before the Kusama Parachain auctions launch. So it's still some time left, right? There's still some time left. Actually, if we had 14 days, because he said he'd ideally like to see 14 days, if we had 14 days, that would be tomorrow. So tomorrow uh, we should see the note, like the official notice, unless this was the official notice here. Uh, for people to unstick their kusama in order to take part in these parachain auctions of course those that want to unstick their kusama those that are happy to no longer receive those staking rewards in exchange for participating in these crowd loans right so uh, yeah uh, 20th of april that's when the kusama parachain auctions are gonna go live so i'm super hyped about that where i'm gonna keep my eye out on it as well of course because i want to see the action live and of course likely do a tutorial because i do have some ksm i don't have that much ksm but i have some ksm which i'm likely going to use in order to bid 
for a project. I'm gonna try and bid for uh, Moon River. I'm probably gonna do it for Karura. I'm not sure. I have some KOR tokens already and also some ACA, but I would like to bid for uh, for Moon River from uh, from the Moonbeam project, which is the Kusama equivalent, just because I would like to have some river. Right, I, I like I like what the project is doing. It's like my second favorite after Akala and Karura, and because I have some Karura, I'm only gonna bid for Akala, honestly, on Polkadot. So my idea is to bid for Moon River uh, in the Kusama Parchain auctions. So uh, let's move on to the next topic here, which is Huobi. So Huobi are saying, are hinting at something, right? So again, Huobi are gonna support the Parachain auctions which like uh, Dan, Dan Reeser was saying in my interview is that a number of exchanges will be supporting these parachain auctions. They'll be giving bonuses to people in order to bid for specific parachains to bond, right? For specific projects. So yeah, it's really, really good to see that, right? And um, we've got a list here. So they're basically tagging all these guys, right? Robonomics, Polkadot, Fala Network, Darwinia, Cross Network, Subsocial, and Kusama. And I'm a bit let down that it didn't tag Chainx. It just shows you that their relationship with Chainx is just not very strong, right? And it surprises me, right? Because Chainx was the first one to develop on Substrate. So it is a bit of a letdown, but it's not the end of the world. Now, uh, let's talk about this article. So this is the article that I want to cover here. Uh, which is going to take a bit of time so again prepare your coffee if you don't already if you haven't already prepared your coffee i'm assuming you already have i think we've been just over 18 minutes 19 minutes now into this video so let's read this and then we'll talk about edgeware at the moment so testing on the rokoku network is near its completion all main kusama projects have tried out the crowd loan auction scheme during the test all projects were able to participate in the slot auction and try connecting to the main network as a power chain Previously, these participants have tried interchain transactions in the Rokoku testnet and some other parachain features. Thanks to this testing and the active community support, now we can tell with some sort of confidence what projects are more prepared for slot auctions and thus can predict what projects will make it to the list of the 10 auction winners that will get connected to Kusama as its first parachain. So this is huge right here because it just shows you that the Rokoku testnet was basically a sign to tell us okay these are the projects that are gonna make it these are the projects that we're gonna that we feel confident to start off with on kusama so it just shows you the ones early in the game and now now i'm wondering because we're gonna see the list and this is why i said today's video is super super hyped because now we can get a general idea of which projects we're likely going to see on Binance, listed on Binance, which are not already listed. I have said to you from the beginning, Ring and Keton are not yet listed on Binance. And I am super hyped because I do think that now CZ is going to have his eyes on this, right? When this finally happens, he's finally going to say, okay, here we go. Let's do this. Let's list them. Let's list them for free. They don't need to pay. That's what I think, right? This is just my speculation. They don't need to pay because we need to take part we need to take up a, a piece of the pie right they need to take a piece of the pie they also want to conduct this they want to support these parachain auctions on binance too why should they let Huobi take all of the all of the earnings right why should they let mxc take the piece of the pie why should they let, let okx take it right so yeah i think that binance are going to participate and here's where i think binance is likely going to start listing a lot of these dot eco tokens and I'm super hyped about it again. Chainx is, uh, well, PCX is a coin, not a token, because you are generating it from the blocks. It's not a token. Now, so yeah, just to continue on here, this is just a prediction and the actual outcome may be totally different. Also, we don't plan to review all projects that will participate in the slot auctions. And this is our subjective point of view. You can do your own research to form your opinion. You can find out more about this on promo team's youtube channel and i have mentioned promo team before as well uh, they're actually um, i know these guys they're basically their channel is dedicated to everything related to polkadot okay so they cover everything related to polkadot interviews and stuff uh, they've got more content i think on polkadot than i have uh, just because their focus is 100 percent polkadot i also talk about other projects as well but most of my focus i'd like to think is also on polkadot to be honest i try to keep you up to date uh, with what's going on so what are parachain auctions and how did it work? I've already mentioned that. Uh, I've already mentioned that. So there's not much need to go through this. 
to be honest but i want to talk about something else so let's see let's see let's see this one this is the part that i want to talk about participants of the auction so now let's get back to the ecosystem projects for convenience we'll divide them into three groups the first group contains two infrastructure projects that are very important for the kusama ecosystem the bridges connecting kusama with bitcoin and ethereum so what does this tell you here what does this tell you here of course you're gonna say well claudio i'm thinking polka bdc here and yeah you could be right but what about chainx right the bridges it's using plural here right so chainx well sherpax right why am i saying chainx because we're talking about kusama here sherpax is the bridge sherpax is the bridge that's gonna connect bitcoin to polkadot okay and darwinia right darwinia scrub network is what's gonna connect ethereum to polkadot right so that's also one of them so that's the first group the second group includes the projects that were in the kusama community for a long time and thus clearly declared their intention to join kusama's power chains instead of polkadot they have a strong technical background a history of rokoku testnet participation and are deemed generally as the projects with big potential the third group includes the projects that weren't very active in the ecosystem previously or were doing their work in a secretive manner but some of them may also participate in the auctions and join as power chains to kusama when the Kusama will be ready for auctions, we'll face the influx of new projects. Every three to four weeks, a new batch of projects will be connected to Kusama as power chains. The plan is to connect about 30 power chains in the first year. So we have to expect much more than just 10 auctions. So that's good, right? 30 power chains in the first year. So this is gonna be this is gonna be running for a number of years, as you can see here. We could expect this for like three years, right? At least three years, right? Because um, the idea is to have 100 of them. So we have to expect much more than just 10 auctions. Now the first group, infrastructure projects. These are infrastructure projects for the common good of the Kusama ecosystem. So as you can imagine here, we're talking about Polka BDC, right? And of course, so these projects will get the power chain slots in Kusama without auctions, thanks to the decision of the Kusama Council. Cross-chain communication is crucial for the success of Polkadot and Kusama. That's why bridges with Bitcoin and Ethereum have such great importance and don't have to compete for slots with other projects. These bridges are funded by the Web3 Foundation grants and they are official they are the official tested bridges distributed in open source format and fully audited by the web3 foundation community and third-party auditors these power chains called polka bdc and snowfork will become the first kusama power chains and will allow users to transfer liquidity from the bitcoin and ethereum networks to the kusama ecosystem which will benefit the subsequent auctions now also one of the first power chain connections will be kusama and polkadot uh, Kusama may be the first power chain of Polkadot by the decision of Polkadot and Kusama councils. And by the way, there are plans to add 10 million DOT to Kusama chain to support Kusama value and maybe fund the pool for cross chain transactions or represent Kusama in the Polkadot council. The final decision will be on the Kusama council. So when they were saying that they want the bridges connected, they were actually referring to this because these are the common good power chains. So Polka BDC and Snowfork for Ethereum. And then, of course, we're going to see Chainx. Uh, as part of an actual parachain and also uh, Darwinia. Again, these are, have actually been supporting the Polkadot ecosystem for quite some time. So there's no doubt in my mind that they're not going to make it. It's just that they're not going to be in the first two or three. I think we're going to see them maybe in the fourth or fifth, maybe even the sixth, right? It depends when they win it. Now, uh, let's talk about the second group. So the second group includes the biggest projects on the Kusama infrastructure that are very likely to be on the list of the first parachains. So the pretenders, Akala, Karura, we've got Karura, of course, as part of Akala, and we've got Shiden Network, which is part of Plaza. And I really like this name, right? Shiden Network. Uh, and uh, the ticker symbol is called is going to be called SDN. I didn't know about this. I think maybe I knew about it and I can't remember exactly, but I remember mentioning Shiden Network in the past in an update video. And of course, KAR for Karura. Now, Karura is the ecosystem's monetary hub and Shiden is a smart contract platform that aggregates all technologies related to smart contracts and their scaling as the smart contract functionality isn't available on the basic layer of Polkadot and Kusama. Both teams are very active on the Rokoku testnet and usually are the first to try out all the new Kusama features. However, after the auction, everything can change as we don't know yet the details and conditions of participation that the teams will offer. One thing seems certain, both will be among the first power chains because indeed they are very mature. Both are being in development for more than two years, have excellent technical teams and active communities. Both projects prepare their referral programs that will allow auction participants and promoters to earn token rewards. 
these two are the undoubted leaders of the race and i totally agree with them uh, it is what it is right and I'm, I'm a happy holder of kor tokens and also aca again they are not transferable they're bound to my wallet simply because i've taken part in an airdrop competition that they've held back and i think they started it back in july of 2020 called the akala mandala festival where you could contribute in various ways uh, via by trading competition creating gifts creating articles right and writing um, doing videos right and anything like that any kind of any kind of uh, um, contribution would have actually made you eligible and i was thankfully eligible for that so i managed to get some uh, aca and also kr tokens now uh, other high quality projects in the second group We've got robonomics bifrost fala cross darwinia kilt and moonbeam so they represent a batch another batch of highly praised projects projects for polkadot let's see what they can bring to the kusama ecosystem so i've got let's see who do we have here we've got robonomics uh, which has one of the most technically advanced teams in the polkadot space building infrastructure for the internet of things robots smart contracts and their interaction with each other and with people the most futuristic one at the time at the time down to earth project which has no reason not to become a part chain for the first wave it will definitely become a part chain in the near future and again i have not covered robonomics yet but i do think it is a futuristic project with a lot of potential it's just i don't see it do well at least not in the coming two years or so i could be wrong could be wrong but it's just that these things take time and we've seen how slow some some projects can potentially move right we're not going to see any kind of rush here we're talking about robots here right robonomics has great potential when robots are going to come into fruition not yet right not yet we're not there yet but we are close uh, bifrost which is a serious DeFi project featuring ksm and dot staking and providing DeFi liquidity the bifrost team is building bridges with eos eat and has many other platform bridges and additional features in the plans uh, so unlike Akala and Plasm, Bifrost doesn't have a separate network for Kusama and all Bifrost auction participants on Kusama will get the same tokens as they will get in the future Polkadot auction. Fala Network, which is the uh, data privacy network and Crust, which is the storage solution. So here we can see the next group here. Uh, again, this is in the opinion of the promo team. They have not mentioned Chainx. This is just in their opinion. Right, we've got Darwinia, Kilt, and Moonbeam. All of these are solid projects. I really like them. Uh, and of course, Darwinia, which they're talking about, the decentralized cross-chain bridge for Substrate, which is the bridge and solution connecting Ethereum, Tron, and Otter, other heterogeneous chains by cross-chain assets transfer and general remote chain call. Also, its main application areas include DeFi, cross-chain, NFT trading, market, games, etc. Uh, we've already got that game, uh, which is Evolution Land. Uh, on Darwinia and also Darwinia has very advanced uh, or sorry has advanced very far in building its infrastructure and community and can definitely try to get a slot in the first wave of parachains and yes I agree they do have a big community a lot of people watching this channel like Darwinia as I do too and also Chainx of course and here we can see the uh, ecosystem timeline which I really like I think I've covered this one before so we've got Chainx here We've got Robonomics, of course, Polkadot, Edgeware, Darwinia, Staffy, Kusama, Fala, and Crust. And uh, yeah, Moonbeam, Moon River. We've got Killed here, which we already spoke about. So here we can see uh, how the list is going on here. This is in the social media stats. We've had a look at this before in the past. At the third group, which is work in progress, we've got the third group for projects that are still in development and have not expressed their plans to connect as a part chain, or there's too little information available about their team or the details of their product these projects can also become a part chain in the future and i totally agree with this it's not that they don't have plans so they do have plans there's just too little information about the team and the details of the product i gotta say sharp ix right we got that white paper or the light paper whatever you want to call it because we have some information there but it is hard to get communication with the team right alex who is the overseas ambassador and also the admin from the Chainx uh, Telegram group has said that it is difficult, right? He is chatting to them and he's using WeChat, uh, WeChat to chat to them. He's basically translating the messages from English to Chinese. There are some people there in that group that can chat in English too, but uh, it's not so straightforward, right? And again, it is also the time zone difference because Alex is in Holland in Europe and those guys are in China, right? So also the time zone difference is making it tough, right? Alex also has a full-time job. So yeah communication is not the best i know they kind of suffer with marketing too unfortunately but they're working on that 
they're working on it and I like it, right? I like the fact that they're doing something now in terms of marketing. They're trying to push the word out there, especially with the Sherpa X airdrop with KSX, right? They've done quite good marketing there to try to get the word out. So yeah, uh, so let's talk a little bit about them. So Chainx, you've already heard about it many times, but we're just going to quickly talk about it. The Digital Asset Gateway and Polkadot Second Layer Relay Chain. And again, this is not due until Q1 of 2022. This is going to be the big one. Most people don't realize how big this is. This basically means that they're going to be supporting the Polkadot ecosystem in the sense of the actual pressure that they're having on the network from supporting all these different parachains. So that's why they need some extra support. And that's where the secondary relay chain comes into play from Chainx. And this is going to be huge. And I think SherpaX is going to do that for Kusama. And I'm likely gonna, we're likely going to see that happen probably before the end of this year, maybe even uh, towards the end of this year. It could be Q4 of this year for Sherpa X because they obviously need to do it before ChainX. Now, so to realize cross-chain asset exchange leading the new direction of Bitcoin cross DeFi, the project began development a long time ago, but went on hold for a long time and started to show signs of life only recently in the wake of the future parachain auctions. They have a very good, very weak, github activity so that's interesting here that they've realized they basically done some research on it and they realized that it has weak github activity and maybe this is the reason why we're not seeing so much hype with chainx anymore just because of this right the team need to get their act together in my opinion and they need to do something about it uh, but i do like chainx right i'm going to be supporting chainx still i'm not stepping away from it right especially now with what's to come right like we got to give them a chance and then zenlink we've already spoken about them the cross chain dex network hydra dx i've already spoken about them as well equilibrium i have not done a review on them uh, sub social i've done a review on them as well centrifuge uh, clover i've reviewed light entry i've reviewed recently polka foundry no math chain no data highway no sub dow bit country so quite a lot of them here in cointer clover i've already covered edgeware i've already covered so uh, yeah uh, this is pretty much how it is right and then they're basically just talking about hobi and the promo team here and uh, yeah this is how it is i'm super hyped about that i uh, i can't wait to see this come to fruition and how how it's gonna happen uh, so let's hope we get some more news let's hope chainx comes out of hiding right because uh, i got a bit worried actually with this article when they said that there isn't that much activity on their github page because to be honest i have not followed their github page very closely I've been busy with other things, but uh, yeah, let's close this off with Edgeware here. So what news do we have from Edgeware? Well, first of all, this is from the 2nd of April, only three days ago. Icon Foundation is going to join the Polkadot ecosystem. Of course, everybody wants to join Polkadot, right? Why should Icon be any different? And Icon were actually considered like the Ethereum of Korea, right? The Ethereum of Korea is basically a platform where you could have smart contracts on but they're based in korea like mostly in korea they've got a team in the us but uh, it's all about trying to catch that korean market and grab their attention to get them to invest right and that's why it was so hyped back in 2017 and they're they're coming back to fruition now they're coming back into the spotlight so i can dow and the btp working group are leading the collaboration with hey edgeware plasm network moonbeam and akala as the fir first power chains to support btp and this is actually great because we're seeing here that Edgeware, Plaza, Moonbeam, and Akala are collaborating, right? This is what I didn't like about Chainx, the fact that they're not collaborating, and even Darwinia are part of that collaboration. So we need to see Chainx get into this collaboration. Stop hiding, Chainx, stop hiding, come out. Come out, people want to see you, right? Bring the team out, come out, start collaborating with these ones, with these networks, right? With Plaza, with Akala, with Moonbeam. They, they collaborated with you in the past, but you've stepped back. So yeah, you need to come out of hiding and basically collaborate it's as simple as that it's all about collaboration nowadays if you don't collaborate it's a struggle in the market uh, so yeah super hyped to see icon join of course they're uh, one of those old projects from 2017 and the last thing that i want to cover here on uh, edgeware because the other updates are pretty technical so there's not much point to cover them is with regards to clover so clover created this extension wallet which is available on the chrome store and added support for heco chain and edgeware install Cl clover chrome extension from the following link and then of course you can see how that looks as well if you want to play around with it and of course you can store your dot there you can basically import your wallet just like you normally do uh, on polkadot.js as well 
so yeah, uh, Hecko chain is uh, basically something related with Hobi. I think it's a, a Hobi Eco chain. That's what it stands for. And um, yeah, Hobi and uh, Hobi Eco chain has something to do with Darwinia, from what I was told. I don't know all the details yet, but there is some speculation that we could potentially see Katon listed on Hobi uh, just because of uh, Hecko chain, right? Uh, it's just speculation, right? And also, just one other thing before I forget to talk about it. Uh, we can't forget about CKTON, right? CKTON on the CRUB network. Because as you probably know, on the CRUB network, we've got C-Ring, which is on the Kusama ecosystem. So the CRUB network has C-Ring, which is the equivalent of Ring on uh, Darwinia, on, uh, which is going to be on Polkadot. And then it's also going to have CKTON. Now, there have no, not been any official details if CKTON is going to get airdropped to KTON holders. I sure hope so, because I know that Chainx have decided to do that with SherpaX, with KSX. When the first block is minted, they're going to airdrop KSX to P6 holders. So it's going to be different for CKTON. I don't think they're going to do that, right? I think it's going to start at zero, uh, and you're going to need to lock up C-Ring in order to generate CKTON. But it would be really nice if they would come up with this community initiative to airdrop all Katon holders see Katon, right? Again, that's just speculation. I'm hoping they're going to do that. It's not confirmed yet. But if they do, that's going to be big, of course, because that's going to motivate people to get into Katon, right? And that's going to push up that really small market cap. So we can only hope something like that happens. It would be a nice marketing strategy from the team if they decide to do it. Again, I'm trying to actually have an interview with Brie from Darwinia Network. Uh, she has not actually made a booking yet, so I'm hoping she's going to make a booking with me. And then we can bring her on and we can ask all these questions about CKTON too, because you're probably curious, and of course about Darwinia in general, and also Crab Network. So that's it from today's video. Sorry about this. I know it's very long. It's been like over almost 40 minutes, I think, but I really wanted to cover all this information, which I think you'll find beneficial. And as always, if you're not watching this live, uh, you can find the timeline, so you can just watch those. Uh, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.